Dear students, today's class is on interdisciplinary periodontics and recent advances in periodontics. We will go on to the learning outcomes. The learning outcomes for today's topic is describe the role of periodontist in various interdisciplinary procedures, explain the effectiveness of periodontal therapy during interdisciplinary procedures like orthodontics, restorative, prosthodontics, endodontics and the possible interrelation and treatment possibilities. Coming on to the introduction, what is the importance of interdisciplinary dentistry and uh, periodontics? The role of periodontics in interdisciplinary dentistry. The role of periodontics is to achieve a long-term therapeutic target of comfort and ease of restoration and maintenance care, good functional treatment predictability and longevity of the treatment. The rationale of interdisciplinary dentistry is to achieve a long-term therapeutic target of comfortable, good functional, treatment predictability, longevity and ease of restorative and maintenance care. Active periodontal infection must be treated and controlled before the initiation of restorative, aesthetic and implant dentistry. So the periodontal health is the synchronon, a prerequisite for successful comprehensive dentistry. So whatever interdisciplinary dentistry, the periodontal health is more important when it comes to interdisciplinary dentistry. So what are all the things we are going to see in the role of periodontal periodontist in interdisciplinary dentist? How periodontal therapy going to help in interdisciplinary dentist or what are all the treatment should be done or can be done in interdisciplinary level when it comes to periodontics. So we will see about restorative, endodontic, orthodontic and prosthodontics. When it comes to restorative dentistry, the main important thing is a biological width. The biological width consideration, aesthetics, occlusal consideration and special restorative considerations. The biological width, the margin placement and the biological width is more important when placing a crown or a filling. If the placement of the crown or the filling violate the biological width, then there will be disease. So the periodontist role is to make sure the biological width is not violated. That is what the relation between tresto and perio. So what is biological width? Biological width is the combined width of connective tissue and epithelial attachment superior to the bone which is the dimension of the space that the healthy tissue, gingival tissue occupies above the alveolar bone which is coronal to the alveolar bone which usually will be 3 millimeters, 1 millimeters of sulcus depth with 2 millimeters of biological width which is a combination of junctional epithelium and connective tissue attachment. So biological width violation can be corrected either by surgical means or by orthodontic or a forced extrusion of the tooth such that the tooth uh, moves away from the bone margin. So the width of 2 mm is maintained. That is the idea of biological width maintenance. If the biological width is violated, if it is less than 2 mm, the gap between the margin of the crown and the crust of the alveolar bone, then there will be disease process happens. Once there is a disease process, there either there will be periodontal gingival recession or there will be bone resorption happens because of the violation of the biological width. So the periodontist role is to prevent the violation of biological width or if it is violated, the role of the periodontist is to correct the biological width violation. So this is an example or a margin placement guidelines where the margin should be placed when the patient is treated with either a crown or with a subgingival fillings. So if the probing depth is 1.5 millimeters or less, place the restorative margin 0.5 millimeter below the gingival tissue crest so that it will not violate the biological width. If the probing depth is more than 1.5 millimeter, you can keep up to the half the depth of the sulcus. 
if it is more than 2 mm you can think about doing a gingivectomy and bring back to 1.5 mm sulcus depth and keep the gingival uh, uh, the restorative margins 0.5 mm below the gingival tissue why we are worried about the margin placement if there is more deeper uh, probing depth and the margin is placed there will be lot of food accumulation happens if the biological width is violated and the space between the uh, margin and the bone is very less then again there will be inflammation and either gingival recession or bone resorption which results in exposure of the gingival margin that which we don't want the main idea of placing a margin placement guidelines is to make sure the patient can able to maintain the gingival gingiva healthy state the next problem interdisciplinary problem we usually encounter is occlusion for a restorative dentist wanting a high degree of predictability the final rest in the final restoration the occlusion should be understandable you should understand the value of occlusion before placing any restoration if there is a minimum eye points in the occlusion also it will result in periodontal destructions and angular bone loss or it may result in mobility a mild amount of high point on a restoration may lead to periodontal breakdown so occlusion is a major role in periodontal disease also so when it comes to occlusion you have to evaluate your restoration it should not be any high points and the periodontist role is to make sure the occlusion is in proper way so that it doesn't impair the periodontal health next interdisciplinary is endodontics perio endo management the classification stated that either it will be a primary perio or primary endo or combination of primary perio and primary endo with a secondary perio or endo or combination of both okay so endodontic lesions can lead to periodontitis or periodontal lesions can lead to endodontitis both is possible so the treatment should be followed based on the type of lesion if it is a primary endodontic lesion just by a treatment of endodontic lesion alone will resolve the secondary periodontal lesion introduced by the primary endodontic lesion if it is a primary periodontal lesion which resulted in endodontic uh, sequelae then you have to treat endodontic lesion as well as periodontal lesion both has to be treated to get back to the healthy state the next possible interdisciplinary relation is orthodontics orthodontic patients always perio plays a major role in orthodontic whether it is a pre orthodontic periodontal treatment or post orthodontic maintenance or maintenance of oral hygiene during the orthodontic procedures all the way from the beginning of the procedure until the end of the orthodontic treatment the patient should be monitored by a periodontist for its oral hygiene next interdisciplinary relation is prosthodontic when it comes to prosthodontics either it may be a pre prosthetic surgery or a uh, procedure which requires rpd or a provisional denture which distributes the occlusion load we have to decide what is the perisomental area of the periodontium whether the periodontium is able to support the denture or removable denture or a fixed partial denture whatever it is so the periodontist role is to evaluate the status of the periodontium when it comes to prosthodontic management whether the patient requires any bone augmentation for ridge replacement or either soft tissue augmentation for ridge defects or it may be a periodontal evaluation for a prosthetic replacement of a missing tooth so the adjacent tooth has to be evaluated for periodontal status before you go for a removable or a fixed partial denture this is the interrelation between restorative endodontics orthodontics and prosthodontic department so basically the resto departments all have an interrelation between each other 
the second part of the class is recent advances in periodontics when it comes to recent advances we will think about what are all the recent we are going to talk about what are all the recent advances in material aspect instrument aspect procedural aspects and what are all the future concepts we'll start with material aspects so materials used for regenerative therapy the newer materials whatever have been introduced or root bio modifying agents or guided tissue regeneration bone graft materials growth factors and soft tissue grafts we'll see one by one what are all the newer materials available in each of this category so we'll start with root bio modification so root bio modification a we can use an EDTA, a 24% EDTA root surface conditioning agent which is topically applied onto the exposed to root surface during periodontal surgery. The example or uh, commercially available product is a Pref gel. This is basically an instrument uh, material which is going to remove the smear layer from the root surface and enhance the formation of or regeneration of the cells in the disease to root surface so basically you have to remove or uh, remove the plug and calculus debride the surface then apply the gel the prep gel onto the exposed to root surface rinse it thoroughly with saline and then if you require a graft material like bone graft you can place a bone graft and close or you can just close the site without any bone graft that depends on the site whether it is one wall defect or a two wall defect or a three wall defect there are studies shown that there will be a better regeneration after the use of this material this is one of the advanced materials available commercially available which can be used for periodontal regeneration the next material is emdogain emdogain is nothing but an amelogenin which is an enamel matrix protein which is seen in enamel or cementum basically the idea of using this material is to regenerate cementum so when it comes to regeneration we have to regenerate periodontal ligament cementum alveolar bone and gingiva connective tissue so all four has to be regenerated then only it is called as regeneration if any one of these is not regenerated and then it is only called as repair and not as regeneration so we have to replace cementum the lost cementum in the place where it is lost we have to replace the periodontal ligament and we have to replace the bone and connective tissue all this has to be replaced in the place where it has been lost that is the role of regeneration the main idea of using emdogain is to regenerate cementum the biggest problem in regeneration is regenerating a new cementum so they try to use amelogenin so that it is an enamel matrix protein it has the capability of producing cementum but what is the drawback of using this uh, protein is this can produce a cellular cementum but it cannot be able to produce an acellular cementum but the bad thing is or the worst part is the coronal portion of the root surface is covered by acellular cementum once there is a disease this acellular cementum is necrosed and removed once you remove the acellular cementum it is very difficult to regenerate acellular cementum whatever studies have proven that we can regenerate cementum only a cellular cementum we need cells to regenerate the cementum so whenever there is a cell in a cementum it is called as cellular cementum so we need to produce a a cellular cementum the cementum should not contains any cells which is very difficult till date we cannot able to achieve a a cellular cementum formation in the coronal part or in the cervical part of the root surface the in the regeneration but we can able to produce a cellular cementum with the help of this emdogain so this is a case picture of use of 
एमडोगाइन ऑन ए इंट्राबोनी डिफेक्ट नेक्स्ट मटेरियल इज बोन सेरामिक्स बोन सेरामिक इज ए फुल्ली सिंथेटिक बोन सब्सिट्यूट मटेरियल सो इट इज बेसिकली ए ट्राई कैल्शियम पॉस्पेट फोर्टी परसेंट विथ सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ हाइड्रॉक्सीपेटाइट द रिसेप्शन कैरेक्टर फॉर दिस मटीरियल इज ऑलमोस्ट ईक्वल टू द बोन रिप्लेसमेंट टाइम सो दट दिस मटीरियल कैन रिजॉर्व एंड रिप्लेस इट बाई द बोन दिस इज अ मटीरियल बेसिकली है बोन सब्सटीट्यूट विच इज एन ऑस्टियो कंडक्टिव मटीरियल सो इट इज गोइंग टू बी स्टे देर एंड इट विल बी रिप्लेस्ड बै बोन ओवर द पीरियड ऑफ टाइम द अनदर मेटीरियल इज जेम ट्वेंटी वन एस विच इज ए ग्रोथ फैक्टर एनहेंस्ड मेटीरियल विच इज कंबाइंड विथ दिस बीटा ट्राई कैलशियम पॉस्पेट सो दट इट कैन इंड्यूस बोन फॉर्मेशन द प्रीवियस मेटीरियल वाट वी हव सीन इज ए ऑस्टियो कंडक्टिव मेटीरियल दिस इज मोर टूवर्ड्स एंड ऑस्टियो इंडक्टिव मेटीरियल ऑस्टियो इंडक्टिव मेटीरियल विच इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ अ बायो आक्टिव प्रोटीन विच इज अूमन प्लेटलेट डिरेवड ग्रोथ फैक्टर अलॉंग विथ बीटा ट्राई कैलशियम पॉस्पेट एंड इट हेज बीन प्रूवन टू सम एक्सटेंट दैट द बोन इंडक्शन एंड बोन फॉर्मेशन अकर्स आफ्टर द प्लेसमेंट ऑफ दिस ग्राफ्ट मेटीरियल सो पी डी जी एफ इज अ ब्रॉड एक्टिंग ग्रोथ फैक्टर विथ माइटोजेनिक एंड कीमोटैक्टिक एफेक्ट ऑन ऑस्टोब्लस्ट सेमेंटोब्लस्ट एंड पेरोडोंटल लेगमेंट सेल्स सो दिस कैन इंड्यूस फॉर्मेशन ऑफ बोन सेमेंटम एंड पेरोडोंटल लेगमेंट बेसिकली इट हेल्प्स इन रीजेनरेशन ऑफ द टिश्यू विच इज लास्ट इन द स्पेस सो द पी डी जी एफ रिलीज फ्रॉम द बीटा ट्रेकलशियम मैट्रिक्स इन टू द सराउंडिंग एनवेमेंट बाइंड विथ ए स्पेसिफिक सेल सर्फेस रिसेप्टर्स ऑन द टारगेट सेल्स इनिशियेट द इंट्रासेलुलर सिग्नलिंग पाथवे बै इंट्र इनिशियेटिंग द इंट्रासेलुलर पाथवे इट इंड्यूस द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द रिक्वयर्ड से ऑन द सैट सो इट इंड्यूस इंट्रासेलुलर ईवेंट्स लेड टू डायरेक्टेड सेल मैग्रेशन एंड कीमोटक्सिस एंड सेल प्रॉलीफ्रेशन माइटोजेनिस of osteoblast periodontal ligament fibroblast and cementoblast so this is a clinical case of use of this material so you can see the radiograph the pre operative and post operative there is some amount of bone fill happens over a period of time the next material is pepgen 15 pepgen 15 is the first and only bone replacement material that combines the organic and inorganic components of the allogenous bone and perfectly mimic the cell binding sequence of type 1 collagen so basically this is a material which mimicking the normal regular bone so the cell binding pepgen p15 accelerate the bone binding of the cells to the particle matrix and initiate the cascade of event that results in the formation of new bone so the formation of new bone has been proven to cause differentiation of variety of different fibroblasts to bone forming cell it supports the physiological process that result in the formation of new bone so the pepgen 15 accelerate bone regeneration and within the healing process so next material is allodern it is basically a soft tissue replacement graft material so allodem is an acellular dermal matrix derived from a donated human skin that undergoes a multiple steps process which removes both the epidermis and the cells that can lead to cell rejection basically this is a regenerative tissue matrix which is a acellular dermal matrix a dermal matrix with removed all the cells only the collagen matrix have been made and which has been packed so the regenerative tissue matrix allodem provides a matrix consist of collagen elastin vascular channels and protein that support revascularization cell repopulation and tissue modulation remodeling so basically this is a material for soft tissue coverage or regenerative procedure for gingival recession you can use this material to regenerate soft tissue 
it is a very good material you can see a clinical photograph of use of this allodum in a class 1 gingival recession case so the post operative you can appreciate the difference between the pre operative and post operative picture next is soft tissue ridge augmentation soft tissue ridge augmentation again you can use the allodum the next part is growth factor or bone morphogenic proteins these more morphogenic proteins are now produced using recombinant DNA technology the BMP2 and BMP7 have been shown in clinical studies to be beneficiary in the treatment of variety of bone related procedures basically it is a bone morphogenic protein which is one, which is one of the protein which is responsible for bone regeneration osteoblast activity once this protein uh, this protein is the one which is going to initiate the um, polymorphonuclear uh, neutrophils or the macrophages into modified into a osteoblast um, basically the pluripotent cell into a mesenchymal cell and a mesenchymal cell into an osteoblast we need a osteoblast to induce bone formation basically this is on the line of bone formation this protein is one of the protein which is going to change the, the pluripotent cells or the mesenchymal cells into osteoblastic cells so this materials are commercially available as a growth factors in bone regeneration next material available is recombinant platelet derived growth factor platelet derived growth factor is again one more important protein which is responsible for regeneration so these proteins have the ability to regenerate the cells which is required for regeneration so it can induce the cells which is required for regeneration for example induction of uh, fibroblast induction of osteoblast or formation of osteoblast and cementoblast can be done with this protein basically after this protein only the bone morphogenic protein will come then next after the bone morphogenic protein comes into the site then the osteoblast formation will happen so basically after the wound there is a wound the wound will be replaced by platelet derived growth factor where the platelets comes to the site it repopulate the site and release this growth factor which changes the cells into a mesenchymal cells once the mesenchymal cells inside the uh, defect site then this it requires a bone morphogenic protein for its action to convert into an osteoblast so we need different proteins at different stages of healing for regenerative procedures so all this protein present at the same time will not induce regeneration so this each and every protein requires at a specific time duration so for example if it is in the first week the site should have platelet derived growth factor in the second week it requires a bone morphogenic proteins and then only it will convert it into osteoblast and then it forms a bone so we need different proteins at different time interval to induce bone formation that is the very difficult part in periodontal regeneration we can give all the growth factor at the same time but all the growth factor will not stay at the place for longer duration so we we require only a specific growth factor at a specific time to induce regeneration if a non-specific non growth factor which is a bone morphogenic which is present in the first week will not induce bone formation or a platelet derived growth factor which is present in the second week will not induce bone formation that is the problem with periodontal regeneration so these growth factors are commercially available as a regenerative material but the predictability of these growth factors in the site depends on the individual so it should be 
spatially present at the required time and at required amount both should be important for regeneration to happen so we'll go on to the material aspects uh, instrument aspects we have seen the material aspects we'll go on to the recent advances in instruments what are all the recent advancements in instruments the recent instruments are periostan vectors lasers membrane auto tags piezoelectric surgeries microscopic surgeries and destruction osteogenesis kit periostan what is the advantage of this newer instrument is basically it is a scaling instrument but the advancement is it has a ring at the tip of the instrument which will tell you whether there is a calculus present or not so when it touches the calculus surface it will give a blue color once the calculus is removed from the surface and the it touches the healthy root surface it will turn into green so you will know whether you are removing calculus cementum or root surface by that you can minimally do an invasive procedure very minimally that means you can do a root debridement without removing healthy cementum you will remove only calculus where wherever there is calculus it will give you a blue light once you remove the calculus it will turn into green so you can able to identify whether there is calculus present or not without any tactile sensation that is the advantage of this material instrument but the problem is it is too costlier to afford the next instrument is vectors vectors again it is an advanced instruments for scaling a vector converts the ultrasonic dynamics of 25000 hertz in such a way that you as a dentist can work in a completely relaxed and non traumatic manner quickly and efficiently the instrument tips goes does not generate heat and does not therefore requires water coolant vector destroys bacterial biofilm endotoxins and removes plaque and calculus leaving a smooth root surface the advantage of this instrument it removes the biofilm plaque calculus and endotoxins from the root surface without damaging the root surface that is the advantage of this vector system the next advantage advancements is laser the hard tissue lasers have been introduced which can be used to do scaling so the erbium lasers groups have emerged as a promising laser system for periodontal therapy so this can be used for detecting and removal of calculus in a better way the next instrument is membrane auto tag kit so the difficult part in periodontal regeneration is containment of the graft once we place the graft material in the site if it is a two wall defect the graft material will come out so we have to keep a membrane the problem with the membrane is the membrane should stay in the place for the period of the next 3 months or 6 months time so that the regeneration happens without any hassle all most of the time the problem with what happens is this membrane will not stay in position for a longer time either it imbibe with the plasma fluids in the sulcus and it gets come out of the soft tissue or it dislodges from the site which results in failure of regeneration this is an instrument which is introduced to make sure the membrane is tagged onto the bone so that it stays in the place for the time period of regeneration that is the advantage of this auto tag kit auto tag kit so it will make sure the membrane is placed in position for the time period of regeneration next advanced instrument is piezoelectric surgery uh, if you would have seen implant dentistry you must have seen a physio dispenser and a instrument with a piezoelectric uh, surgical instrument or a drilling instrument you must have seen so these piezoelectric surgical instruments are the advancements which uh, result in minimal injury to the soft tissue and 
maximize the surgical pre pre precision and intraoperative sensitivity so you can give a precise cut of bone or the soft tissue with the help of this piezoelectric surgical instruments so the high frequency oscillation between 24000 to 29000 hertz modulated with a low frequency between 10 to 60 hertz enable efficient and controlled use and improve the healing of the tissue so this is one of the advancements in surgical aspects so with this help of this instrument you can cut the bone very precisely next advancement is microsurgeries periodontal microscopes can be used for microsurgeries so the microsurgeries will help you in periodontal plastic and aesthetic surgery see if you are planning to do a uh, in papillary reconstruction procedure it is very difficult to do with a normal vision you cannot achieve an 100% success rate of plastic surgery in papillary reconstruction or gingival root uh, recession coverage procedures this is one of the advancements where you can use microscopes to do a periodontal surgery so the ability to perform the surgery with greater precision making more precise incision and the ability to use smaller instruments that cause less trauma and faster post operative healing the precise tissue restructuring with smaller needles and stitches so very useful for soft tissue augmentation procedures mainly the perioplastic procedures a bit a better view of radicular root surface and leading to a easier radicular root instrumentation in turns leading to more effective removal of local factors and correcting of bone defects can be done with the help of this microscopic surgeries the next part is destruction osteogenesis you must have heard this in orthodontics this destruction osteogenesis you can use destruction osteogenesis in perio also for ridge augmentation you can distract the bone coronally so in destruction osteogenesis in ortho you should have uh, seen the uh, bone has been moved mesiodistally here we can move the uh, bone apicocoronally so vertical ridge augmentation can be achieved with the help of this destruction osteogenesis So coming on to the future trends, what are all the future trends? The future can be recombinant growth factors and biomimicking agents, gene therapies, stem cell therapy and tissue engineering, nanotechnologies. So we will see one by one. Gene therapy, it uses purified preparations of a gene or fractions of the genes to treat a disease. In periodontics, use of platelet derived growth factor gene delivers and bone morphogenic protein delivery which can help in production of regeneration so genetic approach to biofilm antibiotic resistance or genetic therapy periodontal vaccinations are some future trends but it's in primitive stage periodontal vaccination is really in primitive stage we cannot able to eradicate all the bacteria through vaccine the next is stem cell therapy and tissue engineering the science of tissue engineering aims at the repair and of the damaged tissue as well as the creating a replacement of the lost one so use of mesenchymal stem cells naturally residing within the bone marrow for true regeneration purpose so the use of mesenchymal stem cells for regeneration have been tried it is still under study so we don't have an material directly available for the clinical use still it is in primitive studies you can use mesenchymal stem cells the but the problem is again we need proteins for these mesenchymal stem cells to convert it into the required cell what we want for that site for example if you want to grow bone you need platelet derived growth factor you need bone morphogenic protein at different time interval along with this mesenchymal stem cell to convert into an osteoblast so for this msc to convert into an osteoblast you need 
proteins those proteins should be available at the required time that is the difficult part in getting this study done next is tissue engineering procedures either passive or active tissue engineerings passive tissue engineerings where therapy is based on guided tissue replacement barrier membranes biologically based cellular dermal matrix all these are already available and future enhancements they are trying with this passive engineerings and active engineerings like enamel matrix derivatives amlogen the endogen the growth factors beta tricalcium phosphate with platelet derived growth factors collagens all this have been tried and under research the final part is nanotechnology uses of nanomaterials so nanomaterials are those materials with components less than 100 nanometers in at least one dimension including clusters of atom grains less than 100 nanometers in size so or fibers that are less than 100 nanometers in diameter films less than 100 nanometers in thickness or nano holes and composites that are a combination of this so nano materials for periodontal drug delivery example triclosan nanospores or chlorhexidine nano particles are been in trials so nano materials for periodontal tissue engineering is still under study these materials can help in periodontal regeneration and periodontal maintenance so to conclude repair of periodontal tissue destruction caused by periodontitis is a major goal for regenerative therapy there will be limited success achieved by utilizing various general approaches such as use of bone substitutes bone grafting procedures and cell occlusive barrier membranes many research are being conducted in cooperation with various technologies materials and procedures to achieve a true complete regeneration of lost periodontal structures the basic aim of periodontal regeneration is to regenerate all the structures which has been lost due to disease either it is a periodontal ligament bone cementum or a connective tissue all has to be replaced then only it is called as regeneration so the research or keep going on based on this aspect so in future we can able to see some new technologies which can achieve this periodontal regeneration that is the role of this recent advancements and future trends thank you